This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room. To the committee. Um, so, Kerry, you're very welcome. Thank you. Um, so, we've got apologies from Sinead, who's running late, and Megan and Dan, and William has sent his apologies, Emer, and I haven't received any others up until now. Um, so, so, our last meeting on the 15th of September, um, the minutes are at page five of our pack. So, are you content enough to note those or agree those minutes? Great. Great stuff. So, last week, we briefly discussed how the committee might be going forward um, and agreed to discuss this at a further date. Um, so, previously, we agreed that we would hold our meetings virtually. Um, and, I mean, we just wanted to ascertain are people still content with that? Or would they like to hold hybrid meetings? Or even return to meetings in person? So, I just want to get people's views. Chair, if I may, I would I would propose a hybrid option because I appreciate that it's a short meeting. Um, and for those of us, uh, and there's connection difficulties, so I don't imagine that people would want to be traveling massive distances for an hour. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier for some of us to connect if we're in the belt or do, to be there, if, you know, if, if we're in yeah. Belfast. So hybrid might be the best way. Okay. Any other members? Uh, I would I would also support a hybrid meeting. Okay. Um, obviously, it gives me the option if I'm in for Anna to stay here rather than yeah. travel travel a couple hundred miles, you know, for yeah. half hour or an hour's meeting. Doesn't make yeah. sense. No. And Kira's and Dari and Nicholas yeah. and West her own. So I'm I mean why, so. yeah, I mean like Joanne, you and I are probably the closest to Parliament buildings, but is everyone else content enough? I mean, hybrid meetings um, seem to be the way we're going anyway. The assembly's hybrid at the minute, so we have no issue. So I'm not hearing any dissent, so we'll, we'll do our no. next meeting. And I'm hybrid on the chair, yeah. Ah, great yeah. Stuff. Okay, that's agreed. Um, so in terms of the LCMs, just a wee update. Um, Emer has kindly provided in our pack a memo, which is a page 12 on the steps taken to date on our committee inquiry and DLCMs. Um, and what we need to do is just look at the proposed next steps and our proposed plan of work, which is attached to page one, or sorry, append appendix one, page 16 of the pack. So um, I'm assuming everybody's got a chance to have a wee look at that. Are you mm -hmm. content with that? I think it's well laid out. But yeah. uh, Chuck, can I ask a couple of questions, if that's all right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the, the stuff from the Justice Committee and, and the points that they're raising, um, I suppose if, if I can direct members' attention to paragraph 23. Um, I suppose I'm keen to understand, I'm wondering whether or not this is just as a result of the end of the mandate and the fact there's a massive backlog, record number of bills, sitting in committees, record number of private members' bills sitting to be scrutinised, um, and that some of the committees, health and protect, health and justice in particular, are massively under pressure? Or is this a standard thing that happens throughout the course of a mandate? Um, that's my first question. Um, also, partly this seems to be to do with complexity of, of the motion that they have to consider. So, I suppose... Um, can you know also to know what are the potential consequences of extending the time frame in standing orders? Um, and is there a mechanism whereby committees can request an extension? Well, first of all, there is a mechanism where we can extend an extension. All committees who are doing well, it's our own inquiry. So it's not set by the department, you know, just in terms of triggering off standing orders about like a bill for different stages. Um, but Emer, I'm going to bring you in um, because the points you're making are relevant, Joanna. I'm sitting in health and um, at the minute we're potentially looking at 11 bills, which yeah. is nice. crazy, buckets, to be honest. So Emer, do you want to come in? 
Yes, thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Paul Gill has also offered to come in as well, um, if we could bring him into the spotlight. So at the minute, there's no proposal. There's no, there is a time limit in the existing LC, in the existing standing order, Joanne, which um, is 15 days yep. for the committee to lay a report. So um, this committee has an inquiry ongoing looking at are there areas of pressure or change that are needing to, um, should maybe be considered by the committee going forward for LCMs. So it could be the case that following that inquiry, when we get to the consideration stage, which is the next part of this uh, agenda item, that the committee decide to look at that LCM and decide the time scales are too short or they need to be elongated. But at the minute, there is a, ta a number of days set down. And um, in it's terms of... We're sorry, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. There's a couple of things about which I'm not clear. One is how extensive the reports are usually. You know, is it taking the committees a long time to consider LCMs in general? And within the 15-day period, um, currently, is there any scope for them to extend that at all? So... Um, Joanne, I'm going to bring Paul. Emer, if you're content, I'll bring Paul in. And then I want to come back just on a couple of comments about yeah. the reasons why the LCM was at the centre of an inquiry. So, Paul, can you come in? Yeah, happy to, uh, Chair. Um, so, to deal with uh, Joanne's second point first, uh, as it were, then, in terms of the time scale and the, the 15 days, the difficulty with this is really the assembly is in the dark about what parliament's deadline is going to be with the bill mm -hmm. so the process is you know is that the uk government minister asks the local minister here are you content for me to legislate on behalf of you as this goes through parliament our minister then comes and asks the assembly well are you content and what they need to do is get an answer back to the uk government minister in time for that bill's uh, progress through parliament but Parliament determines what the time scale is, and when they initially ask our local minister to do this, they won't necessarily know how much time they have to deal with this. And that's the reason that we have this very tight time okay. scale in standing orders, because if it goes past that, it might actually be too late. The bill will completed its progress through Parliament's uh, steps, and we won't have given consent, and we'll have missed that opportunity. So that's why there's this difficulty, and that's why this committee actually, you'll recall just before the summer, wrote to Karen Bradley, who's now the chair of the House of Commons Procedure Committee, and said, is there some way that Parliament could take this into account and make the assembly aware of what steps there might be to extend the deadline in cases of bills where actually there isn't any issue. So, so that's the first point. On the second one then, and the amount of work that's involved in these, I do think that there's perhaps, as far as committees looking at these in the past, concerned that they've maybe they've almost maybe taken the approach where they're scrutinising like they would scrutinise a bill coming through here. And I mean, that's testament to their diligence and wanting to make sure that they're across the detail. But actually, it's not the point of an LCM to for the Assembly to, to scrutinise the bill itself. That's Parliament's job. The question is more, are we happy for Parliament to do our job for us in this instance? Because for whatever reason, there should be a common approach and we're not likely to do things differently here. And Parliament can then do the scrutiny. So we don't actually have to get into the same de detail when we're carrying out uh, the scrutiny. And if, though, there's something that's particularly complex and we think, do you know what? We don't have enough time to make up our minds in this. My advice to a committee in those case instances is, well, then you should just say that you're going to withhold consent, because if you're not satisfied that you're being able to take a view as to whether it's right for here, it would be wrong just to say to the parliament, go, go on ahead uh, and legislate on this, because any of these in issues, our ministers could always bring forward their own bill on them anyway. So, so hopefully that helps with clarifying just those two particular issues there. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And Joanne, the issue was that this was put forward by all parties because no one was content yeah. with the way in which the process was happening. We felt that um, the consideration of the Assembly was a mere afterthought, and at times a courtesy wasn't even afforded to any department. So, uh, And people were loath to hold legislation back, particularly if there was a financial implication. But there are, must be better ways of doing this. Joanne, other questions you had? No, that's it. I'm, I'm covered. Thanks, Chairman. Okay, no worries. Um, Thomas and Jerry, welcome to a meeting. Um, uh, 
So I'm just bringing you to, let me see. So we're at the legislative consent motions. Um, so are we content to, as the plan of work is laid out on page 16, appendix one, page 16, page 12 and four packs, uh, and then the appendices, are we content for those to go ahead? That program will work, that plan? Agreed. Do you, do you anticipate getting much more evidence? Sorry? Do you, bear in mind that we've ha we're having to chase people a lot on this issue. Was it a big thing prior to the Justice Committee? And do you anticipate getting much feedback in terms of oral evidence? Do you anticipate getting many takers? Um, for the LCMs? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it wasn't just the Justice Committee. It was this committee that raised it as well. Um, just in relation to other committees. So, um, and because there may have been more traffic and through justice that it became more relevant for them, yeah. but it's an issue that come up across the board. Um, so that that's my understanding. Okay, so we were, we were asked to follow up the executive on a number of um, occasions for a response to the LCM inquiry. And indeed, my understanding is that informal conversations have happened between officials, but the, there's an indication that there's no evidence of any forthcoming response from TEO, um, and that the position is likely to be broadly in supportive, broadly supportive of what the current position is now. I mean, to be honest, um, I understand that, you know, that has been a non-official or informal conversation, but it's as clear as mud, frankly. And when you're right to a committee, regardless who they are, it's courtesy, it's out of courtesy, you get a response back. Um, so given the time constraints they end this mandate, I'm asking the committee, is it content to proceed with moving ahead with its considerations in the inquiry in absence of any formal executive response? Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, at page 19 of our pack, and this is what Joanne made the reference to, the Justice Committee has written to underline the inadequacy of the time frame provided for instant orders for committees to consider the provisions that we deal with the, the devolved matter and report to the Assembly, especially when dealing with legislative consent motions. And we stated that without prior notice of six months of one particular LCM, it would not have been otherwise possible to consider the devolved provisions to be included in the NCLCM fully and properly and report to the Assembly in 15 days. So what I'm proposing is that we write back to the Justice Committee and inform the Justice Committee that this issue is being considered as part of procedures ongoing inquiry into LCMs and to ask whether it would be, um, you to ask, you know, would, just, would it be, would we or the Justice Committee be content that we provide or elevens to the committee if that's appropriate. So is that agreed? Okay. So uh, and are you also content um, to publish the letter from the Justice Committee on our inquiry on our web page? Is that agreed? Yep. Okay. Um, it's also apparent that in certain statutory committees they have also experienced an increase in a number of LCMs for consideration in the last year. That has been one of the questions you ask as a custom and practice as happens, and it unfortunately does. So in light of this, would our committee be content to seek further evidence or oral briefings from those committees of the Assembly to ask whether they too have experienced similar issues um, and or even an increased number and frequency in LCMs over the past year. So it's not just a Justice Committee, we could ask every other statutory committee. Is that agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chairman, so, just and that, could we also ask them whether or not they consider this as a result, you know, that the, the exacerbation of the problem is as a result of the end of the mandate and the, the pressure on the number of bills that are currently sitting in, in committees or whether or not this is standard throughout the course of a mandate to have to not have time to consider? So it seems to be standard throughout the course of a mandate with the rush through to the end, Joanne. That seems to be the problem for each mandate um, for every committee. 
But Paul, I'm going to look to yourself because you've been here a while. Would that be a fair reflection? We can't hear you, Paul. Uh, I mean, I, I think the issue is ex exacerbated at the end of the mandate when committees have a range of competing priorities, and, and that makes it even more difficult. But, but irrespective of that, my sense is that whatever time during the mandate committees have, they always feel that 15 days is, is insufficient. And mm -hmm. if it was possible to have more time, they would like that. Perfect, thank you. OK, um, so thank you for that, Paul. So in relation to the official opposition, just want to recap on arrangements that we previously considered. So at our last meeting, we agreed for Emer to provide a report on the areas of an official opposition, which could not be agreed by the previous committee during its consideration of this issue. So at page 22 of your pack, Emer provided a memo which provides an update um, on the details of the previous considerations excuse me, undertaken by the last Committee on Procedures. Members should note that previous committee was able to reach a position on a number of, of, of the options for amending standing orders to support an official opposition arrangement, but it was not able to reach a position on others. So a summary of both is on page, um, so is on a summary table on page 36 of our pack. Uh, for me, it's clear from that summary that further work needs to be done uh, by this committee in due course and certainly following the ARC's report to the Assembly on the topic of the Statement of Entitlements for an Official Opposition. So does anyone have any questions in relation to this? No? Okay, so are you content? To note the information provided as a contact for future priorities for the committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So, sorry, in terms of correspondence, there are no items of correspondence. So, I want to take us to the forward work program, which is on page 52 of our packs. So if we are content to agree the former work programme and to factor in, which I think is important, to factor in the LCM work plan agreed earlier as part of our next forward work programme to reflect what we've just agreed, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have no business. Do, does any other member have any other business or any other or items for any other business? Chairman, just a heads up that the business committee yeah. Um, some concern has been expressed by the whips about a about petitions and as, uh, assembly petitions, and I know that that that's been that's going to be in the legacy reports. But it may be worth just dropping a line to the business committee to let them know that we're aware that they've expressed some concerns about it, and we are intending to make moves towards that in terms of a legacy report because it is becoming of an issue of concern for them. Okay, John, could I ask you, um, at, at Tuesday's meeting, could you just say that you've raised it and could we send a note of their concerns on so we have a paper trail? Um, I know Paul will probably go to that meeting, but just to do that formally, um, and then we can we can just bring that back and take it on board. Is that okay? Sure, yes, no problem. Dead on. So um, the date and time in the next meeting is on Wednesday, the 13th of October, half two. Jerry and Thomas, what we agreed in your absence, because the two years were late, was it's great. We agreed a whole raft of stuff when, when you were all out of the room. I'm only joking. What we agreed to do was to look at a hybrid meeting, OK, um, and to give people the option. Um, so it's just to have that in your head. So that's what we agreed to in case you, you see it on the minutes. So the date and time of our next meeting is Wednesday, 13th of October at 2.30. Emer again, and Paul, thanks for your input. And Emer, thank you for the papers, as usual. Very concise and very efficient. So stay safe, everybody, and look after yourselves. Take thanks. care. Bye. 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 Committee room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee room 29.